We get a lot of rain here in Vancouver, Canada, and there's nothing more comforting to me than a hot bowl of soup noodles to warm me up. What is your favorite soup noodle? Let me know in the comments below. Here are four of my favorite recipes that can also be found in my new cookbook, Daily Special. Enjoy. I have about a pound and a half of beef brisket and I bought this at the Asian market because I find that when you buy it in a regular um, supermarket, it comes way leaner than this and I want it to be a little bit more fatty and marbled. Um, the fat will give it extra flavor but also makes it tender and there were some pieces with a lot of fat on it like I'm like oh I don't know if I want to buy this there's just too much I would cut most of it off but there's just enough I think on this one and uh, yeah when you cook it down it really is very delicious so I'm going to cut this down into one and a half inch size cubes and if it was up to my father-in-law, he would want to put tendon in this dish, which I'm just like, oh, I can't eat tendon. That's a hard no. <laughs> if I didn't find beef brisket, I was actually looking for finger meat, which is um, the meat kind of behind the ribs. And it's also super tender. If you can ever get a chance to get some finger meat to try out, it's really, really yummy in stews and in dishes like this. I actually find finger meat a lot more cost effective, especially with meat going up so much in price right now. When it's on sale, I get it for like $7.99 maybe per pound, whereas regular price would be like $10.99 per pound, but still way cheaper than buying steak or, well, I don't like buying stew meat because stew meat I find it's just too lean and I can never get it cooked perfectly. It's just still too tough for me when I get my dish done. So I do like using the brisket or finger meat now that I found it. I'm using the Instant Pot today so it's going to be a breeze to put this together. I'm throwing all the meat into the pot. You can obviously do this on the stove top. It just takes a lot longer because you're simmering and you're braising the meat. But here everything just gets pressure cooked together all at once. I have about one and a half ounce to two ounces of fresh ginger. And it's not a thumb size at all. <laughs> it's much bigger than that. I've already scrubbed it clean. I'm leaving the skin on because I didn't feel like peeling it. But you can definitely peel it if you'd like. I'm just gonna slice it up. And that is also just going in the pot. So <laughs> these like massive cloves of garlic. And this is Russian. I think they're called Russian red garlic. Anyways, it's about five pieces of regular size garlic. So I'm gonna use all of it. And just, it's too big to go into my garlic press too. So I'm just gonna chop it up and throw it in. So I'm just mincing this up. If you don't want this much garlic, you don't have to. Actually, it's a lot more than I expected it to be. All right, all of this is going into the pot. Okay, I'm just gonna combine my sauce in a measuring cup. Quarter cup of Shaoxing wine. And Shaoxing wine is just a cooking wine. If you don't have Shaoxing wine, you can try using a sherry or a different type of rice wine for cooking. Adding two tablespoons of soy sauce. one tablespoon of dark soy sauce. And if you don't have dark soy sauce, you can just use regular soy. The dark gives it extra deep colors. And one tablespoon of oyster sauce. And two tablespoons of chi hao paste. And chi hao paste is a um, fermented soybean paste that is specific for making this dish. So I do keep this in my fridge. It adds a certain flavor that you're not gonna get from just regular, I don't know, some people say sub hoisin sauce, not the same. Okay, just gonna stir this up. And we're gonna pour this over the whole meat mixture. 
I'm going to try to evenly pour it over. I'm also adding one cinnamon stick, two star anise, and about a tablespoon of rock sugar. So according to ancient Chinese secret, they say, well, AKA my mom, they say that the rock sugar will actually help to tenderize the meat, but you know what? I don't know if that's true. A whole tablespoon can tenderize it more than a pressure cooker. In any case, if you don't have rock sugar, just use regular sugar. Okay, putting on the lid, locking into place, making sure the sealing knob is on sealing. And by the way, I did not add any more water. That, there's enough liquid in there to pressurize the pot. I'm going to cook it for 35 minutes on high pressure. That was it. How easy is that? See you in a little bit. So we're having the brisket over rice noodle in a, a broth today. And we can get this fresh in town. There's a lady that makes it fresh every single day. And if you're lucky, you can go by and she might have some left. It goes really fast. Otherwise, you can find this in the refrigerator section of uh, the supermarket and they are also sold as fresh. I don't believe I've ever seen it dried, but I do know that it exists. So you're looking for rice noodles. So there's four of us today. It comes in sheets. Sometimes you can find them already sliced up, but I like buying it in the sheets so that I can cut the width I like to eat. And for us, it's all about the mouthfeel, right? So we want to cut these about an inch wide. And then we're going to separate them. So she has, you know, um, very thin sheets, but you don't want to separate them individually. You just want to separate like maybe three, three to four per, well, here's five, I guess. This is just so that they're not super sticky when you put it in your dish. That there, there is some chew when you're eating them. Right, so this is about two pounds of noodles and this will serve four of us. And I think the brisket is ready, so let's check this out. Oh my goodness, it smells so amazing. Yummy. Okay, I am gonna thicken the sauce with just a cornstarch slurry. But while I can, I'm gonna pick out the cinnamon and the star anise. So I'm just gonna turn on the saute mode, bring it back up to a simmer. And I think I will use about a tablespoon of cornstarch. and about a tablespoon of water to dissolve it. And remember it has to be cool or room temperature water, otherwise it will clump up on you. Actually, there is a bit of fat in here, so I am gonna try to skim some of it. Not a lot. All right, now I'm gonna stir in the slurry. Right, there we go. Let's just have it. let this simmer for about a minute. I didn't bother heating up the noodles, but you could put them in the microwave for, I don't know, like a minute just to warm them up. I made a chicken broth straight from a Tetra pack. <laughs> that is our base. And I just poured the hot soup on top, so that does warm up the noodles. And we're going to spoon some of this right over top, along with some of the sauce and that will just pour into your soup and make it so much more flavorful. I also made some Chinese green vegetables. I'm gonna add, and you can check out the video how to make Chinese vegetables. With a little bit of green onions for garnish. I'm telling you, it's just like the restaurants. Thank you. 
I have a pound of ground pork here, and I'm just going to marinate this while we prepare the rest of our ingredients. Just break it up a little bit. Starting with two teaspoons of hoisin sauce. And hoisin sauce is like a kind of a sweet, savory sauce. One tablespoon of dark soy sauce. And if you don't have dark, you can just use regular soy. And a tablespoon of a Shaoxing wine. And Shaoxing wine is just a cooking wine. It's a rice wine. And I just liked the flavor of it with pork especially. But if you don't have this, we have been known to use bourbon or whiskey. Um, cooking sherry will work. If you just have regular rice wine, that will work also. A lot of people ask me about mirin in its place, and mirin is different. It's sweet and kind of thick. It's different from this type of rice wine. So I would not suggest using a mirin to, um, to replace it, but if you don't have it at all, I would just omit it. Maybe add another tablespoon of soy sauce. Okay, I'm also using about a quarter teaspoon of um, ground Sichuan pepper. And this pepper is I can, kind of a distinct flavor compared to others, but you could use a uh, ground white pepper if you want instead. And a lot of people like to grind their own, but I don't go through enough of it to justify that. So I'm just using the ground stuff. And you just wanna stir this around. In some of my videos, you may have seen that I only stir pork in one direction, otherwise you're going to like undo everything according to ancient Chinese secret, AKA my mom. But in this particular dish, I don't need to create the strands of making it into a pork patty or anything like that. So it's okay not to stir it in one direction. Just get it mixed up. Phew. <laughs> I'm just gonna let this marinate while I prepare the rest of the ingredients. I have one stalk of green onion that I'm just going to slice up for garnish at the end. So this is kind of optional. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. But you really should. It just adds a little bit of freshness, right? Yeah. I have a bigger than a thumb size piece of ginger and I'm a little bit lazy today. So I'm just going to grate it with the skin on into a bowl. And I've been using the organic ginger and they come much smaller than the bigger pieces of ginger that I normally get. So I do find that it's harder to scrape off all the skin in the nooks and crannies of the little pieces. Yeah, it gives you about two tablespoons of ginger. I also have four cloves of garlic. Three of the cloves are going in here and one I'm gonna set aside for the sauce. I'm just breaking the skin so that it's easier to peel. Usually it comes off quite easily. Okay, one is going into the sauce. I'm gonna set that aside and the other three are going in here. Now we're moving on to the sauce, adding three tablespoons of regular soy sauce to my clove of minced garlic. And one tablespoon of dark soy sauce. And again, if you don't have dark, feel free to just add soy sauce in its place. Using a quarter cup of roasted sesame paste so I guess it's like a tahini, but it's like roasted sesame. You could use tahini in its place, but it won't be as, I guess, rich in flavor because the, the sesame paste is actually very um, aromatic in comparison. But, and another great substitute actually is peanut butter. So if you don't have sesame paste, just use peanut butter. A tablespoon of 
regular sugar. And this is where the hot and spicy comes in. I'm very hesitant to tell you to put a quarter cup of chili oil in here, but I'm going to. I don't know if we should use that much. All right, I put in a quarter cup. So this chili oil has like chili, other chili things in it. It's not just straight up oil. So that's what's gonna flavor a lot of the sauce. Okay, and adding a half a teaspoon of this Sichuan pepper powder. Now I've read that Sichuan pepper is actually for the numbing effect of your tongue. I think do you it's want that, do dude? More than numb my tongue. <laughs> we will see. All right, and we're stirring this up. Look at that red, dude. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Before I forget, I also chopped up some roasted peanuts just to add some more texture and yumminess to the noodles. So in Vancouver, we are so lucky to have these Asian markets where they sell all sorts of things. This particular preserved vegetable, which is called, I want to, I'm gonna butcher it, soyimi ya tsai, it doesn't have any English on there, so it was really hard for me to find. And actually it did, it has like, in the very, very small print, it says suimi yatai, right there. There are so many different preserved vegetables, there's practically a whole aisle, but for this specific one, if you can't find it, just don't even bother putting it in. I'm telling you this because we're not about the authenticity of recipes, but providing a really tasty meal. So if you didn't put this in there, you're still gonna come out with a really, really yummy noodle dish. All right, getting my wok going on medium heat. So I want to cook up the ginger and garlic first. Now that my wok is hot, when you see that whiff of smoke, wisp of smoke, it's time to get going. So I added about a tablespoon of oil, vegetable oil, and just adding the ginger and the garlic in here just to cook through. You only wanna cook it for about 30 seconds. Then I'm adding my pork. So after you add your pork, you can bump your heat up to high. And we want to not just cook through the pork, but we want it to kind of overcook. And a little bit crispy from the pork fat that's still in there. In the meantime, you also want to get your noodles going. So I have my noodles cooking on the stovetop right now. So you want that all ready to go so that you can plate it. All right, do you hear that sizzling? That's the pork frying in its own fat. Yummy, yummy. And you want to hear that sizzling. And we're gonna cook it for just another couple minutes. I'm using half a pack. So I'm gonna say that's probably about 50 grams, which is what, three tablespoons worth. And this just adds some texture, some added flavor. You know, when you're eating this in the restaurant, you probably don't even realize it's there. So make sure you mix it well. You don't want a mouthful of this vegetable. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the heat. Oh my goodness, it looks and smells amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's it for your dish. All right, so I have cooked some noodles. We're just using these uh, white floured noodles. They're just super thin. But you can use whatever size you like. Also blanched some green vegetables. This is Chinese um, yu choy. And you can just blanch it in the same water that you cooked your noodles in. 
to spoon some of this over top. And this part, you can add as little or as much as you like. What do you think, dude? One more scoop? Sure, why not? Go for it. This is for you guys. This is gonna hurt. Top with a little bit of green onions. And some chopped peanuts. And to moisten it all up, we're just going to add a little bit of chicken broth just on the sides. And there you have it. And shoot choy is a preserved vegetable. It's actually called a pot herb mustard that's been preserved. And I had a really hard time finding this, by the way. I don't know why. This was the only package that was left in the store. And it seems to be a thing with me lately. I've been having a really tough time finding ingredients. I tasted this one and I found that it was really salty. So I am soaking it in some water. I'm gonna add a couple of teaspoons of salt. I know this is kind of counterintuitive because it's salty already, but I've been doing some research and they say that if you use salty water, it actually releases the saltiness of the vegetable. I don't oh, understand. Oh, those Chinese but people who know. I know, ancient Chinese secret. Um, we're going to let this soak for about half an hour and then drain it. Make sure that salt is dissolved in, in there. Usually I buy this in a can and I would do the same just to get rid of that extra saltiness. But this one does say that it can be eaten directly upon opening the bag, but I tasted it and it was very salty. Next, I'm going to make my marinade for my pork before I add the pork. I'm using one teaspoon of soy sauce. Half a teaspoon of kosher salt, half a teaspoon of sugar, about an eighth of a teaspoon of ground white pepper, one teaspoon of oyster sauce. And if you don't have oyster sauce, you can also use bouillon, like chicken bouillon. And then two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mix that up. I'm adding half a pound of ground pork and I'm just going to mix it all up with my hands. Once all the marinade has been absorbed into the meat, I'm going to add two tablespoons of oil and mix that in as well. All right, I'm just gonna set this aside and get the rest of my ingredients ready. I also want to prepare my sauce for later. So I have a quarter cup of water, adding two tablespoons of oyster sauce, and just half a teaspoon of soy sauce. Give that a stir and set it aside. Also slicing up half an onion. Two cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna chop this up by hand since that's it, there's not much going on. Really simple to make. But you know what, I have to say, the last time I checked the price of this noodle dish, at our favorite Hong Kong cafe nearby, $14 a bowl. It's less than half of that to make at home. For four people. <laughs> right, for four people. I just, I just can't even. Right, setting that aside. I'm also going to add four ounces of bean sprouts. I've just given them a good rinse. That will just add some crunchy texture 
to the dish. You can also chop up some red bell pepper for color or even some Thai red chilies for some extra heat. This is the rice vermicelli noodles that I'm using, super thin, and in Chinese it's called mai fun. Uh, this just requires me to rinse it and then I can cook it straight in my broth. So I'm heating up six cups of chicken broth and if you have homemade chicken stock, that would be tastier. I'm just using the chicken bouillon, better than bouillon, and adding this straight to the soup to cook through. Every package of rice vermicelli noodles is different, so follow the instructions on your package. So like all Chinese stir fries, everything needs to be prepared before cooking because the cooking time actually is very fast. Heating up my wok on medium heat. Okay, I've drained my preserved vegetables. So I'm gonna add that straight into the wok and we're just gonna kind of dry fry it for a while. We just wanna dry fry this so that we can get more of the moisture released and evaporated. That should take you about two, three minutes. I'm just gonna remove it and put it in a bowl. Heating the block back up to medium high, adding a tablespoon of oil. And we're gonna cook our pork. I'm gonna make sure that we sear it well on one side before flipping it over. Traditionally, you'll see strips of pork being used for this dish, but I thought, you know what, ground pork might be cheaper and easier to do. So that's what I'm gonna use here instead of um, chopped pork loin or tenderloin. Totally up to you. If you wanna use tenderloin, you can totally do that as well. That just adds a lot of flavor to the meat, so it'll be extra tasty. I'm gonna break it up now. I'm gonna push the pork to the side. I'm gonna add my onions. And if you're using peppers, you can add them at this time as well. Adding the garlic. And cook that for about 30 seconds until you start to smell it. Oh, smelling good. Okay, adding my bean sprouts. And pour in my sauce now. and adding the preserved vegetables. Even if you serve this on rice, it would be delicious, don't you think? All right, that's it, turning off the heat. Last but not least, don't forget, about half a teaspoon of sesame oil right at the very end and toss that in. Oh, I'm smelling that wok hay Oh action. my goodness, so good. So my noodles took two minutes to cook in the chicken broth after I had brought it up to a boil. And in a typical Chinese breakfast bowl in a Hong Kong style cafe, this is about the size you get. There's actually still quite a lot of noodles in there, some broth. And I'm, I'm gonna give you way more than what you would get oh, yeah. in like, the restaurant, my goodness. That's like two, three times the amount. A typical bowl may have like four strips of meat in there. So this is already so much more. Just gonna garnish it with a little bit of green onions. And that, my friend, is breakfast. 
Taiwanese beef noodle is often made with beef shank, but I found that it was three to four dollars more than what I paid for for the beef finger meat, which some of you may know is one of my favorite cuts of meat. Usually it comes in a vacuum sealed pack like this, often found in the freezer section, and sometimes they do sell it fresh as well, but it's, it'll still be packaged this same way. All right, so they're called finger meat because they look like long fingers, I guess, but really they're just like that part of the cow in between the ribs. I don't know if it's called anything else. You can Google it. Just Google beef finger meat and you'll learn so much about finger meat that you never knew you needed to know. I'm using about three and a half pounds here because that's how much that comes in this package. And I'm gonna cut these into about two inch pieces and I'm gonna parboil them before putting them into the main dish. So one thing about this cut is that it does require low and slow, or in this case, we're gonna do it in the pressure cooker so that we can break down the meat. So it's kind of like a stew meat or a short rib that takes a long time of either braising or, or cooking for a long period of time to soften the meat. It's not like a steak. Don't use it in a stir fry. So for this recipe, you'll want about three pounds and I have three and a half pounds. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use all three and a half and I'm going to parboil it right now to remove some of the impurities and I'll be right back. We're gonna parboil it for five minutes. While the meat is parboiling, we have five minutes to prepare the other ingredients and I have three stalks of green onions. I'm going to use the white part in the soup so I'm just gonna leave those lengths like this. It's going in the soup and the rest of it, I'm gonna chop up and use as garnish at the end. Also using one onion, I'm gonna cut into eighths. Three pieces of garlic smashed, a huge thumb size piece of ginger. <laughs> it's about an ounce. I'm just gonna smash that as well. It'll split into two, smash it further down, get more flavor out of it. Also using two dry chilies to spice things up. You can omit these if you don't want it spicy or you can add more depending on how much heat you would like. All right, we're using our Instant Pot today I'm gonna hit saute and leave it on normal instead of adjusting it too high, which I often do because I'm impatient. All right, adding a tablespoon of vegetable oil or whatever oil you're using and adding my ginger and garlic and chilies. Cook that for a couple of seconds, I guess. You start to smell the aroma of the ginger and the garlic. You can even smell the chilies in there. We're adding the onions and the white parts of the green onion. I'm gonna cook that for about two to three minutes until the onion starts to become a little bit more translucent. Okay, just gonna turn off the saute mode now. I'm gonna add our beef. So this is the parboiled beef. It's already cooked. Well, not totally cooked, but you know what I mean. I rinsed the beef under the tap. Just to re remove any more of the debris from the meat. And it really does give a cleaner tasting broth. And if you decide that you don't want to parboil, you could just make the recipe as is, but just note that there will be a lot more scum and stuff that floats to the top. Totally up to you. Now for the sauces. I'm using two tablespoons of tomato paste. And you can check out my video on what to do with the remaining tomato paste, how to freeze it. So 
so that you can use it in future recipes. Using three tablespoons of broad bean paste, quarter cup of Shaoxing wine, and Shaoxing wine is a rice wine, it adds flavor. A quarter cup of dark soy sauce. And dark soy sauce will add color, it's not as salty as regular soy sauce. And a quarter cup of regular soy sauce. That is going in. And we're going to give that a stir. It may seem like a lot, but remember we have three and a half pounds of meat in here. And then we're going to add water because we're making a soup, a broth. By the way, I'm only using a six quart Instant Pot today. It will all fit in here. Using about a tablespoon of rock sugar and ancient Chinese secret. I don't know if it's true, but apparently rock sugar will make your meat more tender. It also adds some sweetness to balance out the flavors. I'm just throwing that in there. Then I have my whole spices that I'm going to put in this disposable tea bag. If I can get it open so I don't have to go digging for them. Uh, one cinnamon stick two star anise, and it's the star anise that I don't want to go digging for because if this breaks up in the soup, you're going to have these little pods, little seeds, and if you bite into them because you've missed one or two, it's not a very good feeling. And two bay leaves. Also adding about a quarter teaspoon of a five spice powder just into the, into the tea bag as well, and about a teaspoon of the Sichuan pepper and if you have Szechuan peppercorn, that would be good to use as well, but this is all I have. So I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of this. Also putting that in the bag. That will, I'm just gonna drop that into the middle. Then adding about six cups of water. You want there to be just enough water that will Cover the ingredients. Okay, that's probably about five cups. Add a little bit more. Putting on the lid, locking it into place, making sure the sealing knob is on a ceiling. And we're going to pressure cook it on high for 45 minutes. And if you don't have an instant pot, you can do this same recipe on the stovetop, do exactly the same thing up to this point, and then you're going to want to bring it to a boil and turn the heat down to simmer and let it sit on the stove for about three hours to get the same tenderness. We finished cooking, 45 minutes on high pressure, and I let it natural release for 15 minutes because when I'm making soup in the Instant Pot, I always find that if I, maybe I've filled it up too much, if I release it right away, all that pressure will like kind of spew out the top. I've had my messes. So I always let it sit for 15 minutes before I open it up and it smells so good, you guys. Yep, and if you notice, there isn't that scum that you would see if I had not parboiled the meat around the sides but there is a lot of fat in here so I'm going to skim some of the fat and remove it. A little fat is good, too much fat is not good. And while I'm at it I'm going to remove the bag of spices. While the pressure was naturally releasing I got my noodles and my vegetables ready to go. These were three to five minutes in boiling water and I just made them according to the package. And then I threw in the bok choy about a minute or two left of the cooking of the noodles, but you can do them separately if you'd like. And I'm using these fresh noodles. They're actually Korean, but they're a wheat noodle and a wheat noodle goes really well with this dish. I'm spooning some meat in. See at home, you can have as much meat as you want. Do you know that a bowl of noodles like this will cost you about $16 out there? This pot of soup can feed about eight. So you do the math. 
It only cost me $34 for the meat and the bok choy and the noodles and then of course all the other spices and uh, herbs and sauces I already had at home. So when you have all of the ingredients ready to go, it's not gonna cost you much at all. I found small packages of the pot herb mustard. It's a pickled mustard, it's a little bit salty and it works really well in this dish. So I'm going to open this little package up and we're just gonna add a little bit to the soup. In fact, I'm just gonna put it in a bowl and people can spoon as little or as much as they want into it. This package is ready to go. Um, I have a recipe using this for a different recipe, but I did rinse it. But this one, I think you can just serve it as a condiment. And if you don't have this, you don't have to use it at all. The soup is gonna be super tasty just as it is. Okay, and then we're gonna add some green onions and cilantro. And again, if you don't want or don't like cilantro, you don't have to use it, totally up to you. And there you go, 